Hello, my dear students. Now uh, we are heading towards our next lecture that is uh, discrete Fourier transform circular convolution uh, in digital signal processing. So, uh, let us take two infinite, uh, two finite duration sequences that x1n and x2n, and uh, they are having integers as capital N. Their TFTs are x1k, capital X1k, and capital X2k, respectively. So uh, the TFT will be uh, this equation that, that, that will govern the TFT, total TFT. So uh, to calculate the TFT, we have to first of all uh, calculate this sequence like that. That is the x1k, that is the TFT of sequence x1n. So summation of n0 to n minus 1, x1n. Uh, total length is n so that will be 0 to n minus 1 if uh, the length is 5 so that will be 0 to 4 how can we calculate the length uh, it's uh, easy that uh, the sequence can be like that that is x1 n uh, if it is uh, a set representation so we can write like that 1 comma 2 comma 3, uh, 4. So here the length of uh, this of this sequence is 4. Uh, four. So you have to take the DFT through. You have to take the DFT through. Um, as you can say, you can take the DFT that is uh, 0 to 3 x1n uh, let's see here x1 in sequence and it is 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 uh, 4 so uh, that will be a sequence of 4 that will be 0 to 4 so x1 n will be here and that is the, that will be multiplied by e to the power j plus pi k n and the k uh, will be 0 to n minus 1 okay so as we can find out the sequence from here and uh, there is another uh, sequence that is x2 as you can see here that is uh, if we construct the x2 here just put the value x2 in, in that position and this factor is same that will multiply on the same context so uh, you have to uh, mind it that uh, that x1 k is equal to summation of n 0 to n minus 1 x1 n that means the sequence the finite duration sequence and it will be multiplied with e to the power z twice by k n that is small n divided by capital n capital n is the length small n is the uh, number of number of index what kind of index that is if anyone say that x1 n has uh, a value like that 1 comma 1 comma 2 and lot of other things so that will be index 0 if uh, not nothing uh, or no notations have been given there and this index will be 1, this index will be 2. That means if we say x1 0, uh, x1 of 0, so uh, we are recalling this this particular uh, element. And uh, if we just uh, take, as yes, you can say that uh, if we take x2, so that will be third element. Okay. If the sequence is like that, you can say, uh, if the sequence is like that, we take x1n and uh, that will be 1, 1, 1, and so on, 2 you can say. So if we put down uh, arrow sign there, so that will be index 0 that will be index minus 1 that will be 1 which will be 
to just like the line number theory that we used to get onto our mathematics so uh, that is the position that we will find it out and then we put the value there and find the dft now we will try to find the dft of another sequence x3 so if the x3 and dft that is uh, uh, that is the multiplication of the two other dfts so uh, that is a convolution of uh, these two sequences so if we take the idft there when you take the idft that means inverse discrete fourier transform so uh, that will be x3 n 1 by n uh, n 0 to n minus 1 x3 k that is the dft sequence to e to the power z twice by k n divided by n uh, so uh, that will be transferred like that but here we will use minus because that is inverse on that sequence so after solving after solving the equation finally we get this that is the x3 n m0 to n minus 1 x1 m x2 n minus 1 n and m0 to n minus 1 okay so that is the after solving we get this and now we are heading towards the next now we are heading towards the uh, next part that is the comparison between linear convolution and circular convolution as you can see here the shifting property of the linear that is linear shifting in linear convolution in circular uh, convolution is circular shifting the samples of the convolution result will be n1 plus n2 minus 1 that means if we have two other sequences or two lengths different lengths of uh, different sequences we have to take n1 plus n2 minus 1 as uh, the uh, elements that will get onto the output section in circular convolution that will be the maximum of n1 and n2 not like that in previous section that we use in the linear convolution and finding a response of the filter is possible but possible is with zero padding that is circular convolution so uh, that is some methods of circular convolution first of all there is concentric circle method and uh, second one is the uh, first one is a concentric circular method and second one is matrix multiplication method so a concentric circle method that is the x1 and x2 and b2 b2 given sequences the steps followed for circular convolution of x1 and x2 and are just to take two concentric circuits uh, and uh, plot n number of sam samples of x1 n to the, the circumference of the outer circle maintaining the uh, equal distance successive points in anti-clockwise direction uh, then you go then you go through to the next uh, section that is the for plotting x2 and plot n samples of x2 so these are the steps of uh, circular uh, concentric circle method and if you go through to the matrix multiplication method so matrix multiplication method represents the two given sequences on n and x2 x in a matrix form so then we uh, do the multiplication with the matrix form okay so that's all for now in the circular uh, circular convolution method thank you very much for being with me